Okay, so today we have the 60 inch Sony TV. And the model number on this TV is a KD 65. I'm sorry, it's a 65 inch. It's a KD 65 X 80 C J. All right, and see the bottom right there. It was manufactured in March of 2021. So this TV is exactly four years old. And the problem with having this set is that it is totally dead. Uh, it is plugged in now. At the bottom, we should have a white light here, a white, green, or red, or something. At the very bottom, there's like a little bar right here with the standby light inside of it. And we have absolutely nothing. And there's a power button. Yeah, there's a power button right up underneath. Right there. Okay, and if I hit it, there is nothing. There should be a white light uh, when you plug in it or a red light, I believe, until you hit the power uh, right here in this little bar here. Uh, there is absolutely nothing. Totally dead. Now, if we notice on this TV, the TV has absolutely no screws. Um, there's just some holes in here for the mounting brackets for the wall, right? Uh, there's absolutely no screws. And it will trick you. Uh, these TVs are made like 2020, uh, what is it, the X80, X90, X95 series. Uh, the way you take that cover off is there's these tabs at the bottom here. Screwdriver, something that was already kind of broken there. Um, and you just go inside. Actually, this might be too big, what I have here. And you're going to have to keep doing that until the back cover totally comes up. Start here on the end, like that, like that, and this includes basically all sizes, 75, 80, all the way up to 85 inches, um, has the same kind of concept, and oh, I'm sorry, there is one screw here, okay, right up under the AC input. So I'm gonna grab that. That's a regular number two Phillips, hopefully. Looks kind of small. There we go. There you go. I'm just gonna look up under here, make sure there's nothing connected to the back cover, and there is not. Go to show you how these companies are getting with repairing televisions. So first thing we're going to look at is obviously the power supply board, and we're going to see what the flux is going on. So the first thing I'm going to do on a dead TV set with no standby light is I'm going to check the fuse, the AC fuse coming off of here where the power cord goes in at. Okay, and my meter in beat mode. Make sure it's unplugged, okay, which it is, as you can see, obviously. And the fuse is actually good, okay. Then what I want to do next is say to myself, uh, you know, it's going to be a waste of time troubleshooting it, is go right here to the connector that's going from the power supply board to the main board, which is here, 
and I'm going to check for standby voltage. Because if I have standby voltage, that means there's, you know, like I say, you're going to waste time troubleshooting because if I have standby voltage, that means the problem is most likely the main board, why the TV set is dead. I'm going to put my meter on DC volts. Right? I can ground my meter um, anywhere on the metal chassis. I'm just going to stick it in right here. I'm just going to make sure that's a good ground by just putting, I'm going to go back to uh, beat mode and I'm going to make sure that's a good ground by just going across these pins. One of these should be ground. Okay. So that is a good ground. I'm going to go back to DC bolts. I'm going to plug in my TV. And I'm going to check uh, these pins are labeled. Um, let's see here, here. But basically, I'm just going to check all of the pins, okay, and see if I have any voltage. Because usually on a Sony, you have 3.3 volts for standby. Nothing. 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 What I can also do is just unplug it from the main board. And I can just hit all of the pins. Just to make sure that both you didn't go go up. Got contacts right here. And if I want to, I can just replace the power supply board and that should do it. But I want to make sure. We're gonna to try to do this to the component level. And as you can see, if we look, uh, this looks right here, this looks like our standby transformer, the smaller one. All right, and I'm gonna to go to these capacitors and see if I have any voltage on the positive side of any electrolytic capacitors, which I don't have anything there. I'm gonna go right to the diodes. The anode of the diode, I've got some diodes up here. Nothing. nothing these beads i have absolutely nothing on the secondary side now if i don't have anything any voltage on the secondary side that usually means we have a problem on the primary side what i'm going to do now is i'm actually going to go to the big filter capacitor which is located right here and see if i have any voltage on that and i'm going to be very careful when i do that because it's a case that you can get shot and you can short out something if you short the leads across anything so be very careful I'll get back. I'm just gonna plug it right fast and I'm going to find my alligator clip now if you want you can wait until this capacitor discharges fully I can just put my lead on across that you can't see that because the leads are on this side but you get the idea right there's no voltage there so what I'm gonna do is make sure I'm gonna go to my negative side Okay, I'm going to clip it, and if I can find another alligator clip, I'm going to clip that on the other pin to the positive side, being very careful, and I'm going to close the setting, okay, and make sure that I have voltage there that will eliminate the AC circuit. I do have 168 volts, which is good, okay? Let me unplug this right fast and plug in back in my main board.
and I do have 168 volts and it is steady uh, you can even guys were involved in uh, my course on the power supply boards then you know that on the Sony that this is our MOSFET for the standby right it's built in one MOSFET slash driver IC which has a driver circuit or the actual gate built uh, into the MOSFET um, and what I'm going to do now is see if we have any voltage on there on any of these pins so I want to make sure that we have 168 volts on two at least two of those pins it does say secondary and then primary on this side of the line so since we are still on hot ground we're still on this side of the line okay uh, we're gonna leave our ground on the negative side of the filter capacitor okay so let me just go check these pins I do have 168 volts there 167 there 0.69 also have 168 volts there also okay nothing there nothing there <clears throat> what I think we have missing is our VCC which is supplying voltage to this MOSFET all right so let me just pull out I do have 168 volts there on looks like pin 4 which is weird okay so let me just try to um and let's go back up to these MOSFETs right here these MOSFETs are driving this transformer which I think is being used for the 12 and 24 volt line and also we have our LED socket here for our LEDs but let me just see um, we have 168 volts on the collect or collector or the um, drain pin. Okay, I got 168 volts there. Probably gonna have 168 volts on the uh, gate or the source on this one. Okay, I do have at least one of them. All right, um, and I do have. Let's see, what we have have here. 168 volts there, zero volts there. This is a 2.2 ohm resistor. All right, so oh, I do have 168 volts on the resistor, on both sides of that resistor there. But these two filter capacitors right here should be supplying one of those should be supplying the BCC voltage for this MOSFET okay so what I noticed is like I said that MOSFET wasn't getting the BCC voltage on any of the pins which should have been about 16 volts approximately 12 to 16 volts and when I turned it over to the bottom this is what I noticed there is the 8 pin MOSFET you see they're not using two of the pins and just look to the left of it and you'll see three burn resistors they're all burned they're all reading like four yeah, well, this one is definitely up top this one is definitely burned okay so we definitely have a short somewhere along the lines and I could not see the value of those was <clears throat> I bought a uh, new board okay because when it gets like that I mean the board was believe it or not was less than fifty dollars off of shop Jimmy but I noticed that okay so this is the old board on top and that's the IC that evidently is bad uh, with the burnt surface mount resistors up underneath right that is the uh, MOSFET for the standby transformer okay that's for the stand that was produces the standby voltage all right via these two dials right here if I'm not mistaken on the secondary side the cold side okay but this is a GL 15 for but this new one they sent me looks like this 
all right and as you can see it's a little different uh, but uh, it does work I, I put it in plugged it in and uh, it does work okay so this one instead of using that all-in-one MOSFET uh, with the driver it uses a single MOSFET here um, right there and it probably has a driver I see up under it and see this is the actual driver transformer or the switching transformer for the standby voltage and these diodes right here are evidently producing the 3.3 volts standby this is actually a GL2 um, instead of the GL15 like the other board let's see if I can zoom in on that GL02 and the original board was GL15 I was hoping they sent me the exact same board so I can look at those uh, surface mount resistors around that MOSFET uh, up underneath the MOSFET uh, that would burn and get the values off of it and get the actual part number for the MOSFET and I was going to have that handy just in case uh, I come across another one all right, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to plug it in. My meters in DC volts. I have it grounded on the metal chassis because I am going to um, test for standby voltage. I'm going to plug it in without turning it on. Just plug it in. Okay, the TV is powered off. And I should have, one of these should be my standby voltage. Okay. I've got 12 volts there and believe it or not there may be 12.7 volts there 12.7 volts there so believe it or not I think this one does use 12 volts as a standby voltage And the test of time, I'm going to hit power. We should have a white light. Get the white light and voila. The ultimate test of time. That's all we need to see. So basically the whole purpose of this video uh, to the point is that see how fast that we actually troubleshoot it. All right, so here's our old board. So, you see how fast we got to the problem, right? So the first thing I did was I checked on this. This is a, was a dead set, which means no power, no standby light, no nothing, right? So the first thing you want to check is the AC fuse. Now, see from then, from there, I went all the way over here to the plug that's going to the main board, right? Which is this plug here and made sure that I didn't have any standby because if I had standby, then that would have meant that the problem was likely the main board that was causing a totally dead set. The B plus on this capacitor, right, which should have been 168 volts or maybe 380 volts, depending on if the, if the uh, power up at the correction circuit was activated or not. All right. Once I seen we got had that there, then I went to the main standby transformer down here and made sure that I had 168 volts on the standby. Uh, the MOSFET for the standby uh, voltage or the standby transformer and once I seen that we had that Also, so then what did I do is I went and checked for VCC On this FET because without the VCC uh, We probably wasn't gonna have any drive signal to cut that 168 volts on and off to drive the transformer And obviously we didn't I turned it over and I saw that on the VCC line there were some blown resistors all right guys so that's because i know how the power supply works that's why guys i do re really highly recommend that you um invest in my course on the power supply course thanks for watching uh make sure that you do subscribe like the video and until then guys i will actually see you guys in the next one big dog out